Hey folks, so in the past few weeks or months, we've actually gone over all my tanks and I did a quick update of each one. We did a couple of projects too along the way. This video is gonna be a fairly quick follow-up uh, on all the things that have happened in some of those tanks since then. It's sort of a sort of a wrap-up of my around the world update. I wanna make this as quick a video as possible, but still like give you some good information about what's going on here. That's all coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech. I'd like to make this a concise video. A couple of the videos I've made have gotten a little long-winded, but I want to quickly update you on a couple of cool things. Um, I, a lot of these weren't worth making a whole video about, at least not for me, and uh, I decided just to make this video to kind of combine uh, a couple of different things. A lot of you that are fans have seen all these tanks at least a couple of times, and uh, you probably won't have many questions, but if you do, if you're a new viewer especially, and you have some questions, I have an updates playlist that covers, um, pretty much covers all these aquariums. So what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna take my little camera here and we're gonna run around and to most of the aquariums that I've shown already and tell you about stuff that's changed. Okay, so I think we're gonna start with the, uh, the face tank. And the face tank has a couple of things going on in here. Uh, one, I've got some new fish. They're called pencil fish and uh, really, really cool little fish. They got just very understated. They got a little bit of red coloring on them. Uh, they're probably not mature yet. I've got six of them in here. I actually wanted more and went back to get more, but they were out, so I bought out the tank. Uh, they're getting along real well with uh, Mr. Betta there. He doesn't seem to bug them too much. I've also got just a few cherry red shrimp in here, and I've been sort of observing or trying to observe the way they interact with them. Uh, I haven't seen any real problems with that yet. Thankfully, I, just kind of an experiment, I probably will put them in a bigger tank eventually, but this tank, you know, being virtually empty except for him, seemed like a good place for them to kind of warm up to my water and kind of observe them real closely. Uh, it's right here next to my desk and I, I'm over here quite a bit. The other thing I've got in here are these uh, red root floaters, and you can see why they call them that here at the bottom. Uh, they are a floating plant that I have not had before. They make kind of a, they're really interesting looking. They're, they got a little bit different texture on top than uh, you'd see in a lot of different plants. They are going absolutely berserk in here because they don't have a lot of surface agitation. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I've been, I took, have one little sickly little sample of them and I've managed to, to get quite, I've managed to get quite a bit of plants out of it. And uh, I'm slowly integrating this into a lot of my tanks and sort starting to swap out the frog bit, which gets really rooty. As you can see, these roots stay really shallow. At least they have so far in most of the tanks. And um really makes it, uh, really makes for an interesting uh, floating plant in here. Seems to absorb nutrients really well. But I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's a really, really cool plant. And uh, hopefully there'll be more to talk about with that very soon. So next in line, we've got the steampunk tank. And uh, not a lot new going on inside. My little uh, coolie loaches are still doing great in there. Seem to be anyway. Uh, the trim that I did on here is still looking pretty good. Uh, I've only got one plant that's kind of like already kind of peaked out and gone to the top. I'm probably going to have to cut that in half and kind of add it back in here somewhere. Uh, the Anubias that I added to this seem they seem to be too large really for this for this tank. I've taken a a couple out in the little update video. I took at least one of these things out of here. I'm probably going to have to swap some of these out. These cardinal plants seem perfect though. And uh, I might be able to kind of divide these up into here and make it look, uh, I think it would look really interesting. Underneath here, there's some buse. It's kind of hard to see the way it is now. There's some buse and there's a lot of other things that seem to do really well in here. A uh, project that I'm working on right now that I'm trying to figure out are uh, terrariums and repariums and stuff like that. 
and I'm gonna take these plants, uh, a lot of these plants out of here when I set up that project. And that's gonna be coming up here real soon in like the next couple of weeks. I've gotten almost all the supplies I need for it. And so it'll be a good excuse to get in here again, take some of these uh, bigger plants out, kind of rearrange this so it, it works, works out a little bit better. It's doing really good, but it could be better. It could look uh, a lot neater. As you can see, it's very dark under here because of these huge leaves. And uh, it's kind of, I don't want it to kill out anything. Now this thing's in a window, which I think helps a lot. I've got it kind of closed off right now so we can actually see stuff in the foreground, but uh, yeah, so these things do get a bit of light, uh, especially from the window. I'm not sure what all's filtered by this glass, but that's kind of keeping some of these other things alive underneath here that would normally be uh, dead, probably, if they had to survive off this light and then being blocked by these things. So uh, the steampunk tank is still still doing good. Pretty consistent tank. It's, it's, uh, it's another bulletproof stable system. Okay, so here we have the 20 gallon, and it is looking pretty good today. Uh, I've had still a fair amount of hair algae issues. Uh, I've had to clean that up quite a bit. I still have a little bit of black beard algae, although it seems to have gotten a little bit better. Uh, I got some advice last time I posted a video on this about uh, maybe decreasing the flow to kind of help help with the black beard algae. So I put a sponge over the, uh, you probably can't see it too well, but I put a sponge on the output right here and I've really, really slowed the flow inside of this aquarium. All my grommies and other fish seem to be getting along. I'm not seeing any fighting or issues there. Uh, I'm really in love with the tiny little rasboras. They're uh, starting to kind of come of age and they're getting their distinctive little markings and stuff. Uh, People have pointed out that these were exclamation point rasboras, and it's probably a little hard to see on the on this video, but yeah, they're they're starting to show their little exclamation points and looking really neat. Uh, the honey grommies are very very beautiful. Uh, I've got my little uh, endler here, which has already uh, is already spawned with uh, the with the other endler that I've since removed. Uh, what's great is these, um, these croaking grommies or the sparkling grommies have started to mate, I believe. Uh, I've finally started to hear croaking here and downstairs where the other ones are. And I captured a great display the other day with them kind of messing around with each other. Sure not, still not sure, completely sure if that was a dominance display or straight up mating, but... Uh, it was really interesting to see, and boy, they were in full color, flashing, and doing their thing. Uh, <laughs> this actually still, the CO2 is in the same state as it was before, where basically it's kind of going. It's empty, but it's still kind of, the air's still kind of going. Actually, it's slowed way down since the last time I checked to see if I can. Yeah, it's still, still going. I'll slow it down a little bit. That's probably good enough. Yeah, but I probably ought to replace that because uh, <clears throat> the tank, like I said, is empty or virtually empty. It should be empty any day now. So this is my Flex 15, and if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that this one's kind of been on the chopping block for a little bit. Uh, basically, nothing's really changed in here. It's just fine. Uh, it's actually doing pretty well as an aquarium, aquarium wise, but there is some stuff that I need to deal with. Uh, the way the plants are growing in is just, eh, it's kind of unattractive to me. I really, I really want to take the, the entire contents of this and put it into here. And I think that, uh, I think it's going to look a lot better. I'm going to have to rearrange the way uh, this is on the wall because it's going to be a little tall next to that guitar and stuff. So I've got to do some rearranging in here to make this thing fit. And I'm not just tossing this out. I'm not just going to get rid of it. I've got other plans for it, but uh, i got to get it empty first before I start working on that. So that'll be coming up very soon. 
and of course the newest tank here we have the uh, we have the Tiki Island. Uh, I've got the volcano or the waterfall turned off. It feels more like a volcano for some reason, but uh, I've got it turned off for now. So uh, you can hear me talk. <laughs> it is quite loud, and that is definitely like uh, I don't know. That, that makes it kind of difficult to take. But I have I do leave it running. It's when I'm especially when I'm not in the room. I'll go ahead and turn it back on. Turning it off and on hasn't been a big deal. Also, um, a lot of the crypts melted. I had a pretty significant dieback, but I'm already seeing new growth coming up. So that's good. Uh, this stuff's coming right back. These crypts are bulletproof. Um, anytime you want to set up a tank and you want to be guaranteed that the plants will eventually do okay, you can include some of these crypts. They are really, really tough plants. I, I do have some dead, uh, maybe some dead leaves i got to trim back and, uh, and stuff like that, but I think they're going to be all right. I'm going to add some more plants in. Uh, next time I go to do a trim, I'm going to just fill this thing up with plants especially here on the side, maybe put some, uh, put some plants that I trim a lot in there. Uh, the Monte Carlo, a lot of it died. I'm, if you look, see the bright green, uh, that's where new growth is coming in, uh, in the aftermath of the initial cycling for this tank. Well, you can see a lot of it died out. Uh, tanks get ugly when you first set them up. They'll, they'll get ugly and they'll stay ugly. Uh, I don't, you know, I probably could be better with the water changes. Like maybe I should have been doing a water change every day or something like that. But um, uh, usually I just kind of let them do their thing. I let I let nature kind of take its course and I just kind of come in and keep uh, checking on it with my water ch tests and stuff. And then come in with some fish when it's finished, uh, it's finished this little tantrum. If we go ahead and uh, plug in the waterfall. Yeah, it's still going, it's pretty good. I've, uh, I've had to divert some sand back into it a couple of times and I've played with the, the spout a little bit. I put rocks in front of it and of course it'll knock them out. What I probably ought to do is drain, the, I could drain the water down to about here and kind of play with this opening a little bit where he doesn't, uh, Right now, sometimes it'll spurt some sand out. Uh, most of the sand seems to kind of float back down and, and get, do what it's supposed to. But every now and then I'll kind of like spurt it out a little bit or kind of spread it out a little bit further than I'd like. And I think I'm starting to lose sand to uh, the surrounding area a little bit. For the most part though, it all seems to come down and do exactly what it's supposed to. Um, I think it's doing even better than it was the first time. I showed it. Uh, I've definitely made some adjustments here, uh, where the where the sand comes out, to try and improve it, the look of it and make it look neat. Uh, still a pretty cool looking, pretty cool looking effect, and a neat tank. I, I didn't expect it to to work, or to work for very long. So, so really anything I get out of it at this point, I'm I'm pretty happy with. Uh, as you can see, it kind of pours down into a pit. I've added a rock here to kind of disguise the, the edge of it because you can see the pipe if you uh, if you were to look down in there. I've kind of put that rock there to sort of disguise it, give it a little bit of a wall that the sand will fall behind. But overall, it's a pretty neat tank. Uh, it'll be fun. Once everything, you know, once the cycle's through and, and the plants really start to grow, I'd like to add some other pebbles or something in here. The stark blackness here is kind of bugging me. Maybe it'll carp it out and look okay. Uh, if I add some other plants in here, it'll, it'll definitely improve the look of this thing. But this is definitely a work in progress. Stay tuned to see more. Over here next to the bed, we see the spec five gallon. And uh, here we have the inler that was in the 20 gallon long with that pretty uh, other inler, that yellow guy. And she's had babies. I pulled the babies that she had in the 20 gallon over. And then she immediately had babies again. I took some of these, like maybe 10 of them, and I put them in the pond. And the rest I have here, just to, I wanted to make sure the ones in the pond made it. And they look like they're doing okay. So I might either transfer her or I'll take her children, her progeny, out and I'll put them in the pond. But boy, this is looking really good right now. It's a really nice looking aquarium. 
Okay, and so then we move on to the 10 gallon, which isn't bad, maybe. It's kind of a la natural. Uh, a lot of that algae is still kind of coming through. I've only done, I've done a couple of water changes, of course, since uh, the last video. Uh, and I've tested the water and it seems to be testing okay. Probably got uh, a little bit too many nitrates or something. Uh, this is very, very common new tank kind of stuff. I am getting some melt on some Anubias, which I'm not, not too jazzed about, but... And I think I'm over these uh, frog bit things. I want to bring those red root floaters over, I think, and uh, perhaps maybe do something with that. But the big guy is doing good. And uh, I'm still liking the new tank. It's got, it's got a little ways to go, a little bit of cleanup to do, but I think in the end it'll come out looking good. Way over here on the 57 gallon, it is doing good. I actually, uh, when I showed it last time, I, I showed the, the filter was running really slow. I, I had a couple of comments or people tell me that is not normal, it shouldn't be that slow. Like, I knew that the flow for these were a little bit slower, but it was definitely not supposed to be as slow as I was showing it on there. I went through and I checked a bunch of things and uh, I was having a lot of trouble getting it to work. I even shortened my hoses and it still didn't seem to work right. So I contacted the manufacturer. They sent me another one of those filters. And then when I went to replace it, I was gonna just replace the hoses and everything, right? And when I got to this hose, I discovered that uh, I have a pre-filter. I had a pre-filter on the end of this and it fe had fallen off. And right about here, right in here where I can't see, somewhere in here, a, a bunch of snails had collected. So this had gotten clogged with snails, uh, something I couldn't see anywhere in here. So even when I shortened the hose, the flow, um, the flow didn't improve. Of course, this was wide open. It was absolutely clogged with snails. And I think that was the root problem. So I'm really sorry. I owe a big apology to Awasa. Uh, that was something that was completely my fault. And um, I feel really bad. That one, I showed their filter running really slow. I gotta say, as far as canister filters go, the, the Awasa canister filter on here is A number one. One with a built-in heater that works perfectly to keep this. This is always a very consistent temperature and it's very close to what I set. And two, uh, the water quality, even when it was running perfectly, has been amazing. So it is a really super amazing filter. I love it. And as you can see, my water is just like crystal clear. There are a bunch of fish in here. Uh, I still haven't been able to catch this rainbow. I swear I've been in this tank four times. He keeps eluding me. <laughs> Cannot catch that guy. I'm not sure what I'll do with this tank eventually. I think that this tank is kind of getting towards the end of its life and it's probably time to do something about it, but uh, I'm not there yet. So I guess we'll see. All right, so downstairs here, I have the uh, Fluval Flora, the new Fluval Flora. And if you remember last time, I was trying really hard to breed some shrimp. And let me tell you folks, I've got a lot of baby shrimp. I've got baby orange shrimp for days. Thank goodness they are doing super, super well. I'm very, very excited. I've also got the dreaded planaria. <laughs> That's this little white worm you'll see kind of creeping across the glass. And there are lots of them in here. There are, um, I also have, I've got a female endler in here who doesn't seem to eat the babies and I like that, but she doesn't seem to eat the plan planaria either. I'm scared to put anything too aggressive in there or, uh, you know, I could lose some of my babies. I actually have enough in here. I probably ought to transfer a few out uh, to maybe another tank that where they're safe and uh, see if I can kind of spread them around a little bit. I wouldn't even mind putting some in the pond, but uh, we'll get to the pond in a second. But I'm super excited. I'm, I'm very, very stoked that this is working out the way I plan. Also, if you remember, I put in stem plants to kind of uh, make up for the, the fact that I, got, I had a whole bunch of melt back with the, with the uh, sword plants that were in there. 
and that's worked out really well. Uh, they tend to want to kind of curve over to the middle here. They kind of they're going towards the light, of course, and they're kind of due for another trim, but. They've done a great job of filling in the areas and stuff that I wanted them to fill in in the back here. Uh, these things have been very prolific, this this uh, mermaid weed. So I'm thinking I might, I might even swap some of this out. Like I'll do some more trimmings and just keep bringing this down like so. And at the same time, maybe bringing these out of the aquarium and adding them to another tank somewhere else. Uh, the CO2 ran out in this and I never... I never swapped it out. I am, uh, uh, now that the shrimp are doing so good, I'm kind of scared to make any changes. And uh, obviously the plants and stuff are doing okay without the CO2, so that CO2 system might migrate over to another tank uh, once, I, once I get another one set up. You might have noticed this over here next to it. And uh, this is for another project coming up in the next couple of weeks. Well, of course, the big news on this one, uh, one, the stem plant thing worked out great, and I've got so, so many baby shrimp. I'm very, very excited about my huge population of babies. Of course, I threw some food in here. That's why they're all right here in the front. Over in the spec 16 gallon, I haven't had any real significant changes. The trimmings have done well, but of course, you can see it's probably time to do another trim, these stem plants grow super, super fast. Uh, all the inhabitants are doing really well. Still got literally hundreds and hundreds of cherry shrimp in here. It's a big cherry shrimp hoedown inside the speck and they are loving it. But something interesting too with this one is I've got this uh, four leaf clover and usually when I've, I've seen it in aquariums, as it propagates, it only has one leaf. But I'm actually getting four leaf clovers out of this, even underwater. All this is kind of new growth. All of these are new growth. Usually there's like just a single leaf, like a, I think that's a better example of like what I normally see right there. But I'm seeing all these like little four leaf and three leaf versions of it that uh, I, think, I think it's really interesting. I didn't even know it would do that underwater. It's getting really mixed up with the other undergrowth under here and stuff, but um, there's actually quite a lot of it if you kind of scope it out here. I just want to make sure this doesn't get too choked out. So I, I go in periodically and I pull out Java, Java moss, which is kind of collected down in here, thickens up the carpet a bit. Here's the Megaflex. It's doing okay. I'm only going to give it an okay right now. I've done a massive trim. That's why it looks so empty over here I pulled out a bunch of stem plants and stuff that were growing and actually replanted them lower so you can see they're still there but they're they're very short right now and they haven't grown back up um had a tremendous problem with hair algae in here it's just getting very very hairy up here and the and the slow growing plants and stuff and I've, of course i've got kind of a crypt takeover happening on this side where you got Stuff like this thing coming up out of nowhere and then starting to grow. I mean, the crypts are very long and, and doing very well in the back. Them growing is kind of keeping some of the algae at bay. I'm trying to step up my water changes with this tank and try to keep it looking pretty. As far as the stuff living inside of there, they seem to be okay. But, um, yeah, I definitely have to watch the algae on this one. It's starting to kind of get problematic. And over here we've got the 210. I am still working with that. I've kind of got, I seem to have gotten the algae kind of under control. I still got uh, quite a bit up here. Uh, you know, of course, right at the top of the tank where the lights are, are the strongest and stuff. But for the most part, it seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, the rainbows are excited and um, uh, breeding on a regular basis. I, I wish I could pull some of these plants out. Like if I could go in the corner and pull a bunch of these plants out, I'm sure they're all covered in eggs. And I might have to do that at some point. Mr. Tubbs, uh, shy as he is, is doing okay. His tail is doing fine. I have not seen any of that behavior where he was like chewing on his own tail or anything. Since then, he kind of loves to hang out under that log, especially during the day. All the rainbows are doing really well. 
We got the Ankara. The Ankara's decided it likes hanging out back here with the yo-yo loach and the, uh, the big fat yo-yo loach. God, he's getting even fatter. He's getting fatter by the second, literally. And, um, and of course, the bristle nose, who's uh, doing his best to guard his little outpost here in the back corner. Nothing much to report. Uh, the changes I made on the filter socks and stuff are amazing. It made it, that job so much easier. Uh, I did add a skull that I had <laughs> sitting around, which kind of spooks people out, especially at night, because it kind of sits in there and glows right there in the front. He hasn't developed much algae on him yet, to sorry, so it'll start to blend in. But um, yeah, it adds a little bit of interest to this planted tank. I kind of like where this is going. I want to. I hope the plants just keep growing well and doing well. And uh, if that happens, I think this tank in no time will be will be awesome. Moving over to the 27 gallon cube. This also has uh, croaking grannies in it, and they are starting to croak too. We hear them. Uh, I guess a couple of times a week, we'll notice that they're they're going to town in here. Of course, everybody's hiding right now. I haven't thrown any food in to try and lure anyone out. I do have a new guest in here also, and that is a, a pea puffer. I added a pea puffer to this tank. Uh, this tank has millions and millions of little snails and stuff, so I think, um, I think he'll have a good time eating all of those. And if it, the snails sh do kind of decline in there, I might move him over to another tank of his own. The puffer is is very, very shy and doesn't like to come out, especially if there's a camera around. I've really fallen in love with the croaking grommies or sparkling grommies, whatever you want to call them. Um, really, really cool, interesting fish. I haven't seen any aggression towards the, towards the uh, cherry red shrimp that are in here, and I was kind of surprised about that. I, I worried that they would just kind of decimate the population there's a lot of growth in here. There's a lot of places to hide. And so maybe they just stay out of each other's way or they're able to kind of get away when they want to. I did have one fish that, in here that was extremely deformed and uh, looking really crazy. I ended up catching that one out and just euthanized him by putting him in the, I put him in some water and I kind of put him in the freezer and just let him, let him go to sleep which is probably the best scenario for that I could think of. Uh, it looks like, it looks like the type of fish it was, was a, one of the, my, probably my last Threadfin Rainbow. Uh, yeah, it was barely recognizable, but I'm pretty sure that that's what fish it was. And he'd just gotten really old and, uh, and twisted. One other thing that happened with this is the, the canister filter. I had like a, I guess a 207, or was it 204? I can't remember. I had a, I had another fluval canister filter in there and it um, started leaking. And I actually took this old one that I replaced. This used to be on the 57 gallon upstairs. I took it and I went and, uh, and I swapped it out and I took all the media out of the old one and put it in there and did kind of an emergency swap out. I, I got real lucky though, because I came downstairs I had been doing water changes earlier, but I came downstairs, the water level was like to here. And I thought, oh my gosh, well, I guess I forgot to fill that back up. Although, you know, I probably drained it down to here when I did a water change, but yeah, the water level was about this high. And uh, I keep I keep this canister in a, uh, or the one I had in here before, I kept it in like a little Tupperware tray, kind of as a drip tray, just in case, you know, a little bit of water dripped out. That tray was absolutely full. It hadn't spilled over yet. It didn't mess up my cabinet or anything. But uh, yeah, I guess the seal had finally gone bad. They've got like a little rubber O-ring inside, which is probably the cause of it. But it was the weekend. And of course, uh, the way COVID is, you know, everything's closed and not open like uh, as readily as it normally is. So I quickly swapped out the other canister filter. Luckily, I had one sitting on hand. Last but not least is a pond, which has been looking really amazing. Things are starting to bloom. Uh, I put some the endlers from upstairs in here. There's like 10 of them breeding in here. 
or growing up in here, I guess they'll breed eventually. Uh, the plants have really started to kind of come in all around the pond and are looking great. We got some blooms over here. Really pretty blooms of these plants and they go well with the uh, water orchids. The lily pads really go into town. They're just putting up lilies all over the place. I've actually thrown uh, some more stem plants and some other aquarium plants underneath here as well. It's kind of hard to see. You can kind of see Anubis poking out right there. I know there's some reflections. I noticed the algae's been way down this year, way down, uh, probably thanks to all the nutrients being absorbed by this lily pad. And of course the stuff we got going on up here, somebody's mowing the lawn because someone's always mowing the lawn. The uh, water orchids are absolutely gorgeous. Really, really pretty. Of course the pitcher plants are also doing super well. Uh, if you look down in here, you can see that they've, they've been munching on some ants. Stuff falls down in there and gets slowly digested in my little water-bound sarlacc. Yeah, the water orchids don't bloom for very long, but when they do, man, they're so pretty. Pretty fragrant, too. I can smell them over here. Really, really neat. Of course, most of the pods are empty, but boy, those are cool, crazy cool looking little pods. I'm super happy with my tree, too. Someone asked me the other day if we do anything to shape it or anything, and I probably should, but I do not. Currently, I might need to trim some of this off so I can kind of keep it growing this way. I'm really happy with this Japanese maple and the pond in general. It's probably the best looking part of the outside of my house right now. <laughs> it looks really cool. Even a little Tai Chi gnome there. It's in the spirit of things and enjoying the uh, water view. Really neat little pond. Uh, I'm happy that I put this together and that I've been able to keep it maintained over the years. It's been a, a real pleasure. Hey folks, thanks for spending some time with me this week. I really appreciate you coming by to take a look at all my tanks. I normally do two, sometimes three videos in a week or a live stream and two videos, but uh, I've been very busy this week cleaning out my garage. I swear to God, it's been probably four years since I really tried to manage the content of my garage. <laughs> it's super embarrassing. That's why you're not seeing a video overlay of it right now, but it's on its way to clean. It, it took me it took me four days and a U-Haul truck to really get it going. I've actually filmed a couple of videos uh, that are only kind of partially fish videos and uh, I'll be working on those uh, for some extra content next week. The show me your tank thing, I'm gonna continue with that. Uh, I'll probably try and knock at least one of those out next week. I'm thinking about doing it more live stream style so I can kind of speed through it. And I'm also thinking about changing a little bit about the way uh, the way I present it. I definitely need to make a better framework for that moving forward. If, if we're going to do that, it's gonna, we're going to have to change change a little bit about the way it's it's done. I got sort of mixed reviews. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people uh, didn't watch. <laughs> but I'm going to carry on with those. I, I, they'll be good for at least three or four more like uh, extra videos in a week. So I'll have my primary video on Sunday, which is usually my big focus, my big push, my big project. And extra stuff that I think would be interesting to see that... Uh, I don't know, that I want to see on my channel will come during the week. Got tons of stuff to work on. I've, I've delved deep into the world of terrariums. Uh, I've been gathering supplies for terrariums. I'm probably going to start off making a, um, I'm going to do it like a practice mini paludarium, like a little desktop waterfall. We'll be doing all the ariums. So I think next month is going to be arium month where we're, we're just make all the ariums. <laughs> I've also got a major aquarium project where I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace it with uh, this thing right here. I've got it up here kind of like figuring out uh, figuring out the height and stuff and what I'm going to need to move. I'm going to have to kind of move some stuff around. Uh, I might take this down and turn it into something else. I'll have to see how good the condition is. Like, uh I've got a major scratch, like you can't see it, but there's a scratch that goes from here to here, right there in the front, and it's, it really bugs me. <laughs> but it might still be worth like taking apart for the project I wanna do, because uh, again, these first couple of terrariums and paludariums are probably gonna be more like practice runs than finished things. I've never made one before, so it's all brand new 
brand new uh, world for me. But there I go, blathering on again, making this video too long. That's all coming up very soon. So until we meet again, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye I got a really, really need a haircut. And I did not do that this week because I had a major, major uh, bit of work to do on the house. Okay, so I cleaned my garage so they didn't have an intervention. But I might still, uh, but it might be worth Hey folks, t I don't want quarters over here filming me. Hey folks, if you made it this far, thank you for your